justice prevailed. This May on National Geographic. I felt like I failed. There was part of me that knows that by the time I got back, it would be, it would be too late. That, that I was literally their last hope. The groundbreaking series returns, revealing the dark truth that aviation safety advances one crash at a time. Air crash investigation, tomorrow night at 11 on National Geographic. Singapore Airlines is Asia's best-ranked airline, placing first in the 2016 Global Passenger Survey. In an increasingly competitive market, the airline carries nearly 19 million passengers a year to over 60 destinations in more than 30 countries. During the airline's busiest week in December, our cameras have gained exclusive access to its inner workings. We're following the people crucial to its frontline and behind-the-scenes operations. The aircraft is coming in. I want two persons to be on top. Revealing a focus on tiny details. With this thickness, do you think it'll turn soggy? And mega tech. We'll show how hundreds of recruits are kept up to speed on the latest industry practices. and explore the toughest challenges the team face. Captain, we've got one of our uh, passengers that uh, is complaining of chest pain. Most of our flying life, everything is routine. But when something happens, you are expected to make a decision in a couple of seconds. People's lives are in our hands. We have to make sure that everything is perfect and is safe for flying. Changi Airport, Singapore, the world's sixth busiest airport, recorded a new high 58.7 million passengers in 2016. For Singapore Airlines, Changi is home base, with 240 flights arriving and departing every day. Among the busiest routes is Singapore-Hong Kong, with seven daily flights. Captain Alan Chan, one of the airline's most experienced pilots, is today flying SQ-860 to Hong Kong. I just enjoy flying. The first time I take an aircraft up, it's a different feeling. Otherwise, I just bow on there. The Hong Kong flight is a same-day turnaround. This evening, Captain Chan will complete the 5,000-kilometer round trip and land back in Singapore. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. 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 Normally, I talk to the cabin crew. I want to know who's on board. And uh, it's always good to start a conversation and to set the tone. Yeah. <laughs> it's 3 hours 15. First half, we get some weather, and uh, but second half, is smooth. Well, so Hong Kong weather is good. Thank you. Good morning, oh, yeah. <laughs> Flying with the airline for 39 years, Captain Chan has logged over 140,000 flight hours. Before every takeoff, he carries out an inspection of the plane. As you approach the aircraft, you make sure that everything looks clear. I'm looking at the engine, there's no bird stride, there's no impact. The wings in front and behind, they're all in a perfect order. Captain Chan is flying the Airbus A380, the world's largest commercial passenger aircraft. Over 72 meters long, the equivalent of two blue whales, fully loaded, the plane weighs 575 tons. When you stand underneath the Airbus 380, and then you just wonder, this aircraft actually gets lifted get up in the air. Okay, all clear. Good. With the passengers on board, it's time for takeoff. Gentlemen, I'm Captain Alan Chan from the flight deck. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all of them by SQ-860 from Hong Kong.
at the right speed, we pull up, we will sense the aircraft. There's a sense that, okay, it's coming up. You can sense it and you can feel it. You can just feel the aircraft beating off. And it's always a nice feeling. Yep, you're airborne. <laughs> Also hoping for smooth travels is flight attendant Jean Chai, who's been flying with the airline for seven years. My flight today will be Paris, and uh, I'll be looking forward to it because I think now it's really chilly in Paris, and it's a romantic place. Why not? For the 23 cabin crew heading to Paris, preparations begin at a briefing two hours before takeoff. In-flight supervisor Michael is in charge of the team. So please be on your alert, especially do your security checks. Uh, it can be a bit tight, especially on the CDG side. All right, just take note. The Paris flight is 14 hours long, with each crew member working two shifts. Help each other as much as you can, communicate. At the same time, don't forget your teamwork. You're all extraordinary in my eyes. So let's take these chances so Let's have a great flight, guys. Thank you, Michael. Jean is now on her way to prepare the aircraft. 60 minutes to departure time. There's one team member integral to smooth days at Changi. Someone ready for all eventualities, from the minute to the earth-shaking. You have got snowstorms in New York, you've got earthquakes in Japan, you've got typhoons in Hong Kong. This is my workhorse. This is Quentin Chin, the airline station manager for Singapore. Quinton oversees a team of over 300 people, dealing with 240 flights a day. Hey Imran, hi Quentin. How's our flights doing today? Um, nice and for the Bangkok is full. Okay, uh, this is what we can do. If we have seats available on 976 and 978, we can transfer some of our passengers on those two flights. Great. All right. In times of crisis, the station manager is the one in charge. The scale of operations is just tremendous. Sometimes you get flight delays, sometimes you have passengers with issues, with difficulties, and you have to be constantly on your toes because you just don't know what's around the corner. Here you go. Are you okay, you're on back? All right, okay, come. A hub for the region, many of the 150,000 travelers coming through Changi every day are transiting. Delayed flights can mean missed connections. For Singapore Airlines, Quinton's team are the problem solvers. And a problem is coming his way. We are rushing off to Terminal 2 right now. I have a flight coming in late from Delhi, which is SQ401. And we have a total of 28 passengers who will misconnect their flight. We're just going to organize our resources so that we can intercept these passengers as they're coming off the aircraft. We're going to give them their new boarding passes and just let them know that all is going to be OK. be bringing their new boarding passes for the affected passengers. We need to get them to sign the immigration form. If not, they won't be able to go to the hotels. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Awesome passengers. We've got another one and a half hours before the flight arrives. That gives us enough time for me to organize our resources, set up the logistics, uh, get our tables positioned so that when the passengers come off, they will be able to see us. Quentin has an hour to get ready for the plane's arrival. Later that night, Jean carries out her cabin preparations. The team is almost ready to accept passengers. Just a reminder, your Wi-Fi GSM is operational and we'll start working about 45 minutes after the takeoff. So for now, I'm doing my equipment check and I'll do a reporting later. Okay. Life jacket, we've got a mask, the seatbelt, the cart. But I guess a lot of people would think that, well, once we touch down, you know, we get to travel, we have for like wine and dine, shopping. But actually, honestly, what we really need to do is have a good shower and an awesome sleep. We really need that. With all passengers on board, Jean's Paris flight departs on time. SQ401 from Delhi, however, is arriving one and a half hours later than scheduled. Station manager Quinton Chin is standing by to assist passengers with connections. We've got to put ourselves in our customer's shoes. They would have missed an important event, they would have missed some important business meetings. But uh, if you're flying on Singapore Airlines, rest assured, we'll be here to assist you. Be it get yourself being rebooked on a flight, 
making sure you have a good night's rest before your next flight. All this will be organized for passengers. We've got SQ401 coming in late today. Yeah, STA 1715 and ETA 1853. We have a total of 28 passengers who will disconnect their flight. But the rest of them, we will just bring them up here. We will just issue them their new boarding passes and their meal vouchers and hotel vouchers. Uh. Okay, in addition to that, we have already sent a message to the pilot and we have asked them to move the passengers from economy class to business class so that they can deboard the plane earlier. As the team scrambles to get ready, the plane arrives. Okay, looks like we're all set already. It is the calm before the storm. When the passengers come out, you can expect organized chaos because there'll be a lot of passengers who will be worried about their connecting flights. But of course, once they see Singapore Airlines ground staff ready to assist them, they will feel assured knowing that we are here to help them. Connection. Hello. 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 Connection. Hi, good evening. Welcome. Passengers with connections. Hi, passengers with connections. Sir, do you have a connection? Yeah. Going to Perth. Come, come this way, yeah? Flight to Perth Church. We have anxious passengers who are worried about their next flight. Yeah, you have time to catch a flight, don't worry. And with all these challenges, it really stretches you as an individual. All right, I'm so sorry. What's going to happen is that we will provide you with a very comfortable stay at the Crown Plaza Airport Hotel. Okay. You need to go to the transfer desk. Okay, this is the best option too, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> With the passengers assisted, Quentin can take a breather. One flight down. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> all right, one flight down. All taken care of. I think most of our passengers are quite happy with our arrangements. Yeah. Right, good job, everybody. Thank you for your help. Yeah. It's not only the frontline team who are having a busy day. Behind the scenes at Singapore Airlines, work is hotting up. Completing the 5,000 kilometer round trip to Hong Kong, Captain Chan lands in Singapore. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard. For every pilot, when they sense the aircraft touch down nicely, there is just this acceleration. Ah, oh, this is nice. When I come back, it's a mission accomplished. I finished my crew operating pattern and then I said, okay, when is my next one? <laughs> I want to go again. <laughs> Captain Chan will now begin his other set of duties with the airline, overseeing flight crew training for Singapore Airlines. The airline selects cadet pilots from a year-round recruitment exercise. In 2016, 100 embarked on the two-year pilot training program. What we want to put into them is uh, the sense of uh, belonging to SIA and a sense of being a professional pilot. Pilot that is taken to a lifelong learning. At the same time, a person that is confident enough to take a leadership role. Most likely when you're checking, is static. One of the new graduates is Melvin Sim, now a first officer. Becoming a pilot was a child ambition. Now I can look out of the cockpit and uh, just look at the ground, you know, going away from me. And it's just an amazing feeling. Today, Melvin has a compulsory six-month proficiency assessment carried out on a Boeing 777 simulator. Captain Bosco will be carrying out the assessment and performing duties of air traffic control and in-flight supervisor, while Captain Chan is acting as co-pilot. The assessment will take two hours, challenging Melvin's flying skills and simulating potential emergency scenarios. Okay, uh, Melvin, as brief, we're going to run a series of uh, exercises. Yep. Some may be predictive, some may be actual. Yep. So you just react accordingly, okay? Okay, ready? Ready. Okay, Captain. Ready. Yep, ready. What would consider a competent pilot? Number one, he'll be very calm and composed. He will know his procedures. He will cooperate and coordinate with his crew. And most importantly, how does he come to uh, making his decision? Clear for takeoff, runway 3-4. 18 knots. 
If Melvin fails to meet the grade, he could be grounded. I do not know what to expect. I don't really think of it as uh, losing my wings or you know losing my license. It's just to, to feel competent when I go for actual flights, and then at the end of the day is to make sure that all the flights are safe. Speed in and out. The simulator mirrors the exact cabin specifications of a real 777. And first up, simulated terrain avoidance exercises. Mix trust. Mix trust. All the terrain. Hello, terrain. Okay, climbing now, 5,000. I'm performing my co pilot role by just giving him enough support but not leading him so that he makes all the decisions. Unstabilize. Way around. Trust, toga, toga. Wind shear is a sudden change of wind speed and direction that pilots must be alert for during takeoff and landing. Fan going down. 1,000 feet per minute now. I just go for you, huh? Speed 118. Check. Okay, train reversing now, increasing. Yeah. Melvin correctly adjusts the aircraft's pitch to exit the wind shear zone. Pulling up. Well, you are still not out of wind shear yet, okay? Not out of wind shear yet. I think most of the decisions that a pilot takes has a compressed time element. Most of our flying life, everything is routine. But when something happens, you are expected to make a decision in a couple of seconds. Singapore Airlines may now be a world-famous name, but the airline began as part of regional carrier Malayan Airways. But in 1972, they burst onto the international scene with an impressive new fleet. A new giant that's more than just another jumbo. For us, it was international all the way. Well, in those days, we were the challengers. We just wanted to make sure we had a product that was attractive to the passenger. We were expanding nicely, getting more aircraft and getting new types of aircraft and uh, flying to new destinations. So all that helped. As the industry expanded through the 1980s and 90s, the airline kept up. Fast forward to 2017, and it flies 19 million passengers a year to over 60 destinations in more than 30 countries. The airline's growth reflects the trajectory of the island nation it calls home. We have to compete right from the beginning, just like Singapore. We don't shy away from competition. We see the competition. We say, how then do we ensure that we can stay ahead of it? One thing that's very important, that's crucial for this success is really our people. Service is really in their DNA, it's truly so. And many will tell you that if you uh, cut their vein, it, the blood is blue. Blue being our corporate color. It's not only the frontline team responsible for the airline's success, there are over 24,000 staff across the group's operation network. The airline's fleet of 109 aircraft are looked after by Singapore Airlines engineering company. A plane is like a car. It flies a certain number of flight hours or flight cycle. It has to come in for a certain maintenance like changing of engine oil or even changing of the engines. The ground time is precious. As long as it's not flying, it's not making money for the airlines. Aircraft come into the hangars following an average of 1,200 flight hours. There are 22 workshops, completing maintenance, repair and overhaul work. This includes wing and engine checks, as well as aircraft painting, with the biggest planes requiring up to 1,000 litres of paint. Overseeing the operations is Chong Ka Meng. The hangar goes round the clock, seven days a week, all year round and um, everybody's always running to make sure that things are happening. Singapore Airlines fleet has an average age of seven years and nine months, some of the youngest in the industry. The newest addition is the 253 passenger Airbus A350, designed to be a more fuel efficient long haul carrier. The airline is banking on its success, with 11 in operation and another 56 on order. 
In just under an hour, the engineering team will be parking this megaton giant. Another massive operation at Singapore Airlines is the kitchens, which work 24-7 to produce over 15 million meals a year. Every day, approximately 42,000 are prepared by catering partner SATs, blast chilled, and sent to the airport before flights. The airline's menu range has over a thousand different meals, and it rotates regularly. The in-flight services team overseeing the work, Richard Nio and Paolo Zambrano. Pieces of papaya marinated, and then that's it. Just a nice papaya salad. With this thickness, do you think it turns soggy? From the ingredient combination and the flavor of the dish, there is an intensive work around weights and specs. We always have a joke internally that we yeah. say that uh, I go around and mess it up, and Richard comes and <laughs> clean it up, kind of, and, and fix it for <laughs> The team don't just oversee the menus. Richard carries out daily spot checks to ensure the kitchens are up to scratch. I was trained as a chef. I started off with a hotel and then I joined the airline environment. Before entering the kitchen, Richard passes through an air shower, which reduces the risk of contamination. I enjoy coming to the kitchen every day to ensure that the quality is good. Is that a vinegar inside of water? When you're making thousands of meals a day, managing quality is essential. We will be going to check to ensure that the, the consistency, the, the weight and everything is followed according to our guidelines. Is there any chance that we can get a little bit more brown colour on the outside, more, more caramelised on the meat, mm -hmm. so that you get that uh, barbecue flavour on that? Some dishes have been made the same way since the airline's inception. We pride ourselves as a Singapore airline and we need to ensure that uh, whatever food that we serve on board is authentic. Good balance of yep. meat yes, and a yes. little bit of fat. Every satay, the meat is killed by manually. At the same time, we are still keeping the traditional of using charcoal to grill the satay. The whole idea of the grilling the satay with charcoal is to give the flavor, good barbecue flavor to the whole satay. Meanwhile, Paolo is working to add two new meals to the first class menu. A little bit of oil that we can put. The dishes were created by the airline's international culinary panel, a team of chefs from around the world. Ready to rock and roll? Paolo is tasked with turning restaurant devised recipes into meals eaten at 30,000 feet. We got the kale, we got the tomatoes, all there. So this one, the sea bass is ready, I think we're there. This is now is a first class dish, so I have a little bit more of, of uh, movements and freedom that I can play with. But usually we need to consider the ease of service by the crew. First class dishes are plated on board, which means extra considerations for the kitchen team. You have to keep in consideration the safety of the crew, safety of the passenger, uh, aircraft taking off, so the angle of the aircraft, the ease of service for the crew. For oh my guys, it's easy to follow and uh, no problem. For Paolo, good food is a priority. I'm Italian, so food is in my blood. I discover my passion. When you create a nice dish, you basically make people happy. You put out your art, and really into that dish, you, you put up your professionality, right? Everything is on the board, everything is on the table. There are 10 different speciality kitchens preparing the airline's meals. Richard ends his inspection at his favorite. Chef, Hi. good morning. Good morning. What, what fish is this? Amarai. Around 900 kilograms of fish is prepared every day. The smell is very fresh. Uh, you don't have a fishy smell. The way that the chef cut the ingredient, the quality of the ingredient they use, the seasonality of the ingredient they use, is all about the Japanese food. There is a standard uh, guideline that you need to follow, but at the end of the day, it's still the passion that uh, helps to make the food better. Looks like Paolo's meals are good to go. Have to spoon some of this fantastic uh, lettuce puree, and then the last step is to add the fish. It's actually designed and fully taught to replicate the meal that, uh, in this case, Carlo Krapko does in his restaurant. Beautiful.
Before they can be signed off, however, meals must be taste tested at one of the airline's special facilities. Paolo and the in-flight services team are about to taste test some meals. At cruising altitude, a cabin's dry air and pressure decreases our taste bud sensitivity to sweet and salty flavors. To accurately review meals, the team use a pressurized cabin, mimicking the conditions found at 30,000 feet. Paolo has seasoned his recipe to accommodate the aircraft pressure and has added a special sauce. So there is that huge pressure ensuring that what I replicate here is exactly what they have designed and what they have created in their own mind. Interesting, the sauce doesn't change color after reheat. The in-flight services management will decide if they're up to standard. Let's try it out. As you, when you're tasting it, it's exactly mm -hmm. as yeah, it's written mm -hmm. on board. I have a concern with the kale. Yeah, it yeah. was really dark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it because of the cooking process or, yeah. is or it was it that naturally that? It says yeah. doom. I like the kale. It's good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In terms of combination of flavor, profile, color, visual appeal, uh, taste, everything is, uh, is, we are almost there already. So we just need to change one, some of the item. Thank you. <laughs> I'm happy, yes, and I, I can relax. It's always that journey, right? How is it going to end up? Is it going to get me more work to do? Huh? But I think it was good. No, I'm, I'm definitely happy. The engineering team of Singapore Airlines are waiting for an important arrival. So this is one of the new uh, A350s from uh, SIA, so uh, we are very careful when new aircraft come into our hangar, so we want to make sure that everything goes smoothly. Fifteen people are required for the plane's docking, and at over $310 million a pop, no one wants to make a mistake. The aircraft is coming in, I want two persons to be on top. Anything not sure, on. Right? Okay, okay let's go. The plane is booked into Hangar 4. Docking a 220-ton plane, though, is not like parking your car. When we come in, we need to make sure the aircraft is on the center line. So the, both of the wingspan has sufficient gap that you will not hit and damage when it comes in. With the A350's 64-meter wingspan, there will only be a clearance of a few centimeters. Any slip or any just distraction, things can go horribly wrong. When it comes to protecting high-tech equipment, all the team need is a simple gadget. The hair horn is to stop the aircraft so that uh, they will check again whether the, there's enough clearance for the aircraft to come into the hangar. We just want to make sure that uh, we don't uh, damage the aircraft. They will have to go again moving the plane another 12 centimeters to the right. The aircraft is towed in carefully, with marshals supervising from all sides. This time, the parking is perfect. The plane's in now, and it's a very, very close fit, but we're happy that uh, we can get it in safely. Now that's where the real work starts, actually. <laughs> work will continue at the hangar, where safe operations are more than just a job responsibility. People's lives are in our hands. When they fly the aircraft, their safety, it all depends on what we do on the ground. We have to make sure that everything is perfect and it's safe for flying. Singapore Airlines has recently launched a facility with Airbus with eight state-of-the-art simulators. When fully operational, it will be the largest Airbus training center in the world. Back at the Boeing 777 simulator, Melvin's assessment is about to reach its toughest stage. Okay, so uh, Melvin will now continue with the loft. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to reposition you to uh, Seoul. Okay. It will be uh, snow scene. 
At this point, Melvin has no idea what situation is about to unfold, but he must pass to preserve his flying status. Yes, uh, Karen Chan here. Hey, Captain, we've got one of our uh, passengers that uh, is complaining of chest pain. The uh, doctor says the situation is critical. He's going into cardiac arrest at the moment. The uh, doctor advises that we land at the nearest suitable airport immediately. Land immediately. Okay, we, uh, we got it, we got it. Thanks. Okay, the passenger uh -huh. uh, has a cardiac arrest. Okay. The advice is that we should land immediately. Okay. Now the, the cabin crew in charge is uh, calling us, informing of this medical emergency. There will be 101 thoughts going through my mind. First thing will be, where am I now? And next will be, where am I going to go? Since uh, Seoul is still the nearest to us, okay. uh, request we just turn back towards Seoul, contact uh, Inchon and uh, request for radar vectors. He needs to get the patient or the passenger back as fast as he can so that he can get a proper medical help. After Singapore 15, uh, we have a medical emergency. We prioritize on uh, safety and security. So when one passenger is unwell and requests immediate medical attention, yeah, we would do our best to uh, bring the aircraft down. Loud and clear, we are ready for uh, arrival. Uh, the cabin is uh, secure. Okay, thank you very much. Having made the correct decision to return to Seoul, Melvin will pass if he completes a safe landing. But with a snow-covered runway, the required braking distance could be up to 50% longer. If he go, comes in too fast, then he's in trouble. He has to go around and try again. If he slows down too far, then he's wasted precious minutes. Having crew to your landing stations, thank you. 2500. Singapore 15, wind 060 at 10 knots, braking action good. Visibly 10 kilometers. You're clear to land, runway 33 left. Manual flying. The targeted landing speed is 277 kilometers per hour. 500. Check. Approaching minimum. Check. 100. 50. 40. 30. 20. 10. Manual braking. 100 knots. Check. We stop at the runway. Yep, coming to full stop. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your pilot speaking. We'll be stopping here on the runway and uh, please remain seated and we will advise you shortly. Thank you for your cooperation. I thought that was quite uh, well handled, Melvin. How do you feel after that? I thought I was a bit of rushed to for the flaps uh, extension. I could, could have given myself more. But generally, I thought you did quite well, huh? so that's good. Melvin has passed and will keep his flying status. Well, I, I'm, I'm happy with my performance, but of course, there's still room for improvement. Yeah, I, I think he did extremely well. There's a sense of satisfaction that this guy has not wasted his talent and the company has not wasted a resource. To join the ranks of the nearly 8,000 cabin crew flying with the airline, batches of new recruits come through the Singapore Airlines Training Center. The 15-week training program begins in classrooms. So then, how can you show your planes to passengers? Such as this cultural awareness lesson. I contact. Designed to offer an understanding of the passengers served across the routes flown by the airline. Can you do this to the Korean passengers? No. So we use this pump. Good morning! The latest recruits are under the supervision of Fujuat Fang, who has been working as a trainer for over 19 years. And straight off, you love that voice that she is projecting. So something that we can look out for, when you put somebody up on the plane, it is a serious business. It is not business as usual. Madam, thank you for waiting. I'm afraid that I'm unable to serve you the champagne right now. Perhaps I can offer you a glass of Riesling. Okay, well done, Violetta. <laughs> if we look at the strategy, do you think that it can be worked on further? Yes. Yeah. Recruits soon begin honing their skills in mock-up cabins. Before they can let them step on a real plane, the trainers have to see if they're up to standard. Those who don't meet the grade could be let go. Whatever that's been taught, we need to see them here in the mock-up. Whether it be service procedures, communication skills, all this must come to pass when they're here in this training session. It's a global company, so we have a global company's orange juice and champagne. 
Miss Fu speaks from experience. This brings back memories because I joined the airlines on the 1st of August 1977, a good 39 years ago. As the airline grew, so too did the profile of the Singapore girl, the name given to the coveted role of female cabin crew flying with the airline. For someone who was a cabin crew in the 70s, it must be like an impossible dream come true. In the early days, uh, jobs were really not easy to come by, but to get this, this one is like a grand prize. Fully-fledged crew also returned to the training center. Back from Paris, Jean Chai is working toward her wine sommelier badge to become an expert in the airline's wine range. When you were a trainee, everything you come in, you'll be like, oh my God, what am I going to do today? You have nervous. But now, you know almost everyone in training centre is like a family kind of thing. Remember we mentioned the Mendoza, which mm -hmm. of his altitude. Over nine months, Jean will spend more than 80 hours in the classroom studying wine color, clarity, taste and aroma. Have you tried American um, Chardonnay? Yes. Heavily oak. Definitely I'll be working hard for the badge. Wine taste is influenced by the cabin's low humidity and pressure, so the team study over a thousand wines every year to enable them to recommend suitable pairings to complement meals on board. Clear, medium ruby colour. Capsicum. Intensity? Mm. Medium? Jean has seven years' experience. But down the hall, batch 57 are still in the early stages of their training. Cabin control. For cabin crew recruits, the final part of their training program is dedicated to safety and security. Having fire on board can be very severe, so you all need to know your step very well. Recruit won't be able to graduate unless they can master how to handle emergency situations. Shut it down. Um, will pop up if you try to activate. The hardest stage is coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We will be making emergency landing on water in about 20 minutes. The trainer is responsible for getting them into shape, and the recruits will be prepared for a range of different scenarios. The first stage of their training requires batch 57 to master a safe technique for the emergency exit slide. Two, three, four, five. The first jump. I will be sitting on top and then push myself downwards. I will go out and demonstrate. Okay, see at no point I was touching any of the canopy. Anybody have any question? No. Come, let's go. Stretch your leg out and then you'll go. Don't be worried. Lean forward. Lean forward. Yeah. Uh, it's like the feeling where you're dropping, but you get control after a while, so it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Very good. Who's afraid of heights? Yeah, here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I'm not ready, someone else will go in. Next, things will get tough. Hey! As they take on water landing simulation at the pool. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. The crew will now instruct you on the safety instruction of this aircraft. Some trainees are tasked with playing the role of passengers. Please follow this instruction carefully. Remove the life vest from under your seat. Put your life vest on now. In the event of a water landing, cabin crew are expected to lead the passengers safely to the life rafts. The cabin crew are tasked with evacuating all passengers within 90 seconds. It's very hands-on, so we actually get to do a lot of what we've been beating the whole past month. Next, the pool jump. 
I'm a bit scared of water, but this is something that we all need to do as a heavy load. The trainees will not be able to graduate until they have completed the safety stage, which means whether they want to or not, it's time to jump. Whoever is ready, come. Go. The trainees then tackle water survival exercises. They join together to conserve energy. Finally, it's Batch 57's last challenge of the day, life raft boarding. Essentially, this is a technique. So once you've got a correct technique, it'll be easier. So the first ball, just come forward. You feel like you're falling back, but you have to always keep close to the raft. So you have to always lean forward and reach as far as you can until you get the first handle. Once you get the first handle, try your best to pull yourself forward. If you can't, grab both handle and lean one side and sweep over. Because uh, with the water, it's actually very slippery. You can't get hold of the grip to climb up. Yeah, tiring day. The safety course is complete, but for cabin crew, vigilance doesn't end here. They will return a minimum of every 12 months for recurrent training to ensure safety standards are maintained. A plane's exterior is not the only design aspect under consideration at Singapore Airlines. Globally, the cabin interior market is expected to be worth over $29 billion by 2021. No wonder the airline's team keep upcoming projects under wraps. This is a product innovation studio where we do a lot of uh, very important but obviously very secretive work, you know, looking at the next generation of our products. They are currently developing a business class cabin update for the A380. A lot of team effort that goes into looking at all the details, every aspect of the cabin, uh, colours, textures, functionality. Expectation has grown since the plane's first launch in 2007. When you look at how far the bar has been raised uh, in the industry to this point, uh, you look at business class these days where it's a one-to-one -one configuration, so you have direct access to R. Uh, you can see that that actually is a first-class product. So I think these things are pushing all the airlines to see what more we can do within a very confined space. I think that's something we always bear in mind. The team also oversee in-flight entertainment, and the airline was the first to provide on-demand video to all cabin classes. Worldwide, 6,000 aircraft today offer seatback screens, but with mobile options competing for attention, airlines are working to stay relevant. The new interface for the headset is a, a lot more intuitive okay. because it has the shortcuts and you can just click on it and it appears over there. Okay. The team have launched an app to pair with their system and today they are refining its user interface. Whether you want to bookmark it or resume it on, so we're going to integrate it into the app itself. So one of the things we were thinking of is to really sync up, let's say if you, you add favourites mm. here, it should sync up here. It is a collaborative approach between the product team, the folks who look at the in-flight entertainment experience, as well as our guys who do e-commerce. In the future, the linking will be initiated from the seat back. Mm -hmm. So they will say, I want to link my device. Mm. Physically, there's not a lot of options you can offer to the passengers. So it's really in the digital space. But moving forward, of course, there'll be a lot of other technologies, virtual reality, augmented reality. But for the team, People are key to innovation. Ultimately, SIA is about the people who make things happen. You need all the parts to be working very well to flow through together in a very positive way. It's uh, every aspect of our operations, both the frontliners and as well people working in the background. Because everybody is so passionate that we're able to do all this thing together and do it well.